ones that are not here, we'll be praying for you. Yes, for amen. The reason you're not here, and if you're out there playing church, shame on you. Amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, let's take a prayer request. I'll read my list, and then I'll let you all tell who you need us to pray for. Uh, pray for Donnie Collin. He has pneumonia. And also pray for his family because he's going through a lot of troubles right now in his health. Uh, pray for Lori. That's James Calder's sister. Uh, she's still having a lot of severe pain from that surgery that she had. And she's still looking for more surgery in a few days. And so just pray for her. Uh, pray for Chelsea Kelly. Uh, her health issues and her great-granddaughter. She's, is she five or three? Five years old has cancer the side of her heart, mm-hmm. and at first they said they weren't going to do nothing. They were just going to watch it and see if it grows or stays what it was. But now they told them they have to do something. So the last I heard, they were sending her to Cincinnati, wasn't it? Yeah. For uh, to see I what they, they could to do for her up there. Uh, pray for the Gamble family. That's my cousin Donnie. He passed away. Uh, pray for that family today. They all will need the Lord. They need to get saved. Uh, pray for Lehman. He's doing a lot better since his fall. And uh, pray for Sister Rebecca Mason and her family. She lost her dad and she's having a really hard time about it. And also Lori Thompson, she lost her dad and she's having a really hard time. Pray for Sabrina because this is the week that her anniversary of the week that her dad passed away on her birthday. So it's been hard for her this week. And also I think she said her mom passed away the same month. So it's a hard month for her. But also I pray for this little three-year-old who wrote me back that she has a colostomy. He has a colostomy already, and he has to go to Cincinnati Hospital tomorrow to see what uh, else they can do for her. She didn't say if it was cancer or what. So just pray for them. Uh, pray for uh, Diane Tread Egner. She come mm-hmm. here a few times on a Tuesday night. I guess you'll remember she got me some this summer too. Uh, her sister passed away, so pray for that family. Uh, pray for Russell Murphy. He went out to the ER yesterday with very, very high blood pressure and kidney stones, so pray for him. Uh, pray for my family, uh, my friends, uh, Christine and her family. Uh, pray for Ed and John. Still keep them in your prayers about the tornado that hit their home in Henry County. And in I heard they was going to pay off the mortgage, the insurance was, but then they have to find some way to fix the mobile home or uh, move it out and put a new one. So they'll still have to be in a long straight of having to pay uh, money out. So just pray for them and God help them. They also pray that they'll be in church and stay in church. I know we love the Lord, but we need to have a desire to be in church. Pray for James Carter also. He's He's doing well, and he was supposed to went back to God. His stitches took out, but they said they thought they should wait a few uh, days. So I'm glad that he did because the last time I think that's what happened is they took the stitches out too early, and it just popped right back open. And that makes 57 surgeries he's had on his head. So he's been through a lot in his lifetime. Uh, pray for, still pray for that lady named Linda Allen that I got a prayer call for the other day. She's still having a lot of severe pain and some other things going on in her family. Pray for Sister Elizabeth McKnight. She's been in severe pain this week. And pray for all that's grieving the loss of a loved one, all the sick and shut in. There ain't no way we could tell who they are because there's too many. So pray for Samantha Lamb. She's the one that had the stroke, and she said she was doing some better. Thank God for that. And pray for the day spring pastor, David Hager. He had two stints put in his heart this week. Uh, so pray for him that he'll get back uh, in order to run the church good and everything. Seems like they're doing real good about getting people coming in. So I just pray they've reached the lost and they're trying to get the building beside them fixed up or that we can, they can have sins there and everybody in the community can get together and worship the Lord together by singing. So I think that's a good thing. So just pray that all works out for them. Anybody else? Remember my friend Shannon. It's a miracle from the Lord, and uh, my friend Carol Hendry, who's going blind, her eyesight's get worse and worse, and eventually she just won't be able to see at all. But she's the same age as me. Mm-hmm. And also, I've got a friend Angela, um, who I had asked earlier about if anybody knew of a place for rent. Her and her husband, her two little boys, really desperately need a place to rent. She said she'll find a place. She's going to have to quit her job, and I don't know what she's going to be able to do, but 
um, they desperately need a place either in Corbin or London or something. And she's got like the first month's rent deposit and money and everything. And she's just having a time finding one. So there's a lot of people that she needs to talk to about. Yes. Praise the Kelly. She doesn't have an MRI. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, I mean, it's delivered. And the two boys now, they're doing good. They're still working, even though know, they're sick, but um, they just won't give up. Yeah. They said, you might give up. That's not right. Uh-huh. And uh, keep on praying for me that I can hold it steadfast. Amen. Mm-hmm. Still remember Brad, too. He had a friend that passed away this week with the same guy. Catherine that Hardy passed away, and he's about the same age. And, Got me kind of hard on it. They have to go to the funeral home, but he said he made it. Thank God for that. Remember my brother? Um, he's about the same. And uh, remember that little girl in Nashville that I've been finding in her request? She never did send me her address so I could send those her things to her. her <laughs> She did text me yesterday, I believe it was, or sent me a message on Messenger and said that she had been having one epileptic seizure and one right behind the other mm-hmm. this whole week. And mm-hmm. she's been like that since she was 15 years old. And I just can't control her. She's mm-hmm. been on all kinds of medicine. Mm-hmm. And uh, she probably didn't even think when she sent that message to send me her address. So I'm going to try again to try to get her address and send those check to her. But just remember her in your prayers. I think she's like, uh, I think she's like 38 or 39 now. She's just young. Yeah, that is young. Remember my family, my children. Remember Carol and Barry. The ones that's not here in church that need to be here. Yes, amen. Anybody else? Remember my brother who gets incarcerated and remember Paul, he really needs he really needs the Lord. Yes. And me as well. Yes. With Paul. <laughs> the Lord is in control. Sometimes it takes years for us to see the fruit of our labor, but it's worth it all when it comes to somebody being saved. Yes. It sure is. I also remember Brad's girlfriend. She's been really, real sick. Uh, off and on ever since she had that COVID last year and then she got it again I think for the second time and she just can't can't get her strength back up she just stays congested in her head all the time and I still want to say it has something to do with the COVID shots I don't care what anybody says because I have a friend also or she's my cousin and she's never been sick hardly in her life but she took the shot and she's definitely sick now just pray for everybody but we know God can heal even if it did come from that, God can heal us if yeah. we have faith to believe. Remember me, too, because I still have problems here and there and everywhere. And I'm supposed to go have a MRI done, too. But that don't worry me. I know God will take care of it. Right. Yes, he will. He will. He know the take. Anybody else? Remember that. Yes. Yes. Remember our church. Yes. 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 Yeah. Let's remember Lisa. It bothers me when Lisa's not here. I, yeah. Lord needs to touch her body. Yes. Right. She needs to get a desire to be in the house of God and overcome whatever's going on in her life. We all do. We have sometimes we have to push ourselves to go on. Yes. Even preachers, they have to push themselves to go on. Yeah. Singers, whoever they might be, they just have to push through the crowd, just like the woman with the issue of blood. She had to push yeah. through the crowd. Yeah. Right. If we don't push through the crowd, we're not going to touch Jesus. If we don't have a desire in our heart to serve the Lord with full ability to serve the Lord, we're not going to be ready for heaven when he calls us. I don't want nothing to stand in my way. 
to be ready for him. I don't know about anybody else, but I want to live for the Lord every day. Let's remember our food ministry, too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're still in need of food, even though we got a bunch of stuff this past week, but it's not, it's not. Actually, the things we need. That we need. Yeah. You know, we've got uh, wipes and hand soap, and, which we do need to yeah. give that out, too, but that don't feed their little bellies. That's right, yeah. Anybody else? I'm spoken by raising your hand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we praise you today for being with us and keeping us in your care this week and bringing us here one more time to worship you in spirit and in truth. And those that are watching by the airways today, Father, we ask God that you would touch them. Help them to see their need for you if they don't know you, Lord, today is their Savior. Pray for the sick everywhere in the homes, the hospitals, the jails, the prisons. Wherever they may be, Father God, those that feel that they are unworthy, God, help them to see that they are not worthy through our doings, but we are all worthy through the blood of Jesus. And we thank you for shedding that blood for us, Jesus. And we thank you, God, for giving your own begotten Son to die on the cross, that we would not have to go to that place called hell. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, the ones that are closest to death today, God, that you would speak to their hearts, Lord, if they don't know you, to call upon you before it's too late. Be with those that are grieving, wherever they may be, Father God. Bless this church, Lord, continue to minister unto us all, that we might minister to others, Father, we pray. And we know there's nothing too hard for you to do. You're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we're believing for all these prayers to be answered in your time and in your place. And we're not fail to give you the praise, the glory, the honor and thanks is due your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Take the offer now, man. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Let's just sing a little chorus as she does this. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after
the Lord. I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad to be here today. Amen. I'm so thankful to the Lord for how good he is to me. Yes. He has never left me. He has kept his hand on me. And I'm so thankful for that. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I think back to when I was seven, I could have died. I choked on a hamburger and french fries. And, you know, they say, you know, God can do anything. God talked through a donkey. You know, we know that in the Bible. Well, he used my stepdad to save my life when I was seven years old. And my stepdad wasn't serving the Lord. But he whacked me just right spot on my back. And I, you know, spit out that burger and fries. But I'd lost consciousness and everything. You know, I could have left this world when I was seven. I could have left this world when I was 20. And I had my oldest son. Because I got hemorrhaged to death. You know, I think of all the times that God kept his hand on me. He kept his hand on my children. Ian had a fever seizure when he was three and stopped breathing. And eyes rolled back in his head. And I thank God that he kept his hand on him and used my mama to help Ian. And God kept his hand on Connor. He could have been hit by a truck. There was a time when a car zoomed right past him and his little toddler headed right toward the busy road. And it was like he hit something and bounced right back and was giggling. You don't giggle if you bounce a speeding car. I'm sorry. I believe an angel was between my baby and that car. But there was a reason God saved me, and there's a reason God saved my children, and the devil ain't going to take them. Right. Amen? Right. There's a reason God saved my husband. You know, he could have died as well. I know I've heard very few of the stories. I'm sure there's a lot more I don't know, but I know God's kept his hand on him. A lot of it of our own ignorance as well, that we do things that we're not supposed to do. But I think God has kept his hand on him, and he kept his hand on him for a reason. But, you know, think about why you're here. We need to serve the Lord while we're here. This Absolutely. thing's wrapping up. This thing ain't getting any longer. The time is coming when the Lord's going to, God's going to say, go get my children. We're going home. You know, and I pray that all my loved ones get to go home as well. But if they don't, that I can't help that. I can only worry about me. But we can only be alive while we're here. Amen? Amen. Page 45 in the same red book. There's power in the blood.
be a witness to those that are in darkness, God. We don't know how many that we can be a witness to if we just live right and we talk right to them. And I pray for this little man that I met the other day. I think he's probably 30 or 40 years. He said he didn't go to church nowhere, but I heard him. I sang in these old songs, and I told him after it was over with and he was singing these songs, I said, I think you could make a good singer if you'd sing some gospel songs. He said, well, I do play some gospel songs every once in a while. I said, do you go to church? And he said, no. I said, you don't go nowhere? And he said, no. I said, well, here's your card. Come and be with us. So just pray God a deal Amen. with his heart and he will yes, come sir, to you. church. Amen. I don't know his life, but God does. Still, 
I see victory. I just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline, for I'm covered by his blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're gonna lose the battle tonight. Just remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Sometimes our battles get hot and Seems like we're fighting a lot, but remember, I'm standing on the rock. So Satan, if I were you, I'd turn around and give up too, cause I do believe you're about to lose. I just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline. For I'm covered by his blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're going to lose the battle tonight. Just remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Sing a little louder with me, Kelsey. I need help. I need help, sister. I like what the words are to this song. We need to remind Satan who we are in Jesus. Amen. Even though my spirit is low and seems I can hardly go, but still I see victory. Many times I walk in my faith and can't see what lies before me, but still I see victory. I just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline, for I'm covered by his blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're going to lose this battle tonight. Just remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Sometimes our battles get hot and Seems like we're fighting a lot, but remember, you're standing on the rock. So Satan, if I were you, I'd turn around and give up too, cause I do believe that you're about to lose. I just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline. For I'm covered by his blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're going to lose this battle tonight. Just remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Amen? You can't cross that bloodline when you apply it to your life. And I apply it to my children and my husband and my household. And we apply it to our loved ones in the name of Jesus. There is nothing more powerful Thank God. Right. Nothing more powerful than the Lord. And you know something that keeps plaguing in my mind, and I know I mentioned this before. Brother Albie Robinson had preached a message over a new vision. I probably said it a hundred times. I don't know. I tend to repeat myself. But he talked about that the clouds are the dust of God's feet. Yes. That is a big God. You know, I like to think things visual in my mind. You know, I was always that way in school. You know, you can tell me how to do something, but if you write it down and I see how to do it, then I can do it. But you can tell me over and over and over how to do something, but I've got to physically do it myself. So when you talk about the clouds, the dust of God's feet, I picture some big old feet. I'm telling you. And you've got big old feet, you've got a big old God. I know about you, my oldest one wears a size 14 in a shoe, and that ain't nothing compared to the size of God's feet. So I'm so glad that I serve a big God. A big God that nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible for him. And I thank God for that.
Sister Felicia, do you want to sing this one? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God.
Thank you. 
Father 
incredibly it's miraculously saved today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Before I go on, I want to tell you that we've got a quick business meeting at the church, so do not try to Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. I was sitting there and worshiping and recollecting over the songs that were sung today. And I don't know if any if you've noticed it, but a lot of them was talking about home. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about heaven. Yeah. <clears throat> But we still got trouble and trials that we're going to be going through here. Amen. Every day that we wake up, we have trouble and trials. So I want to go into uh, John chapter 14 today. I don't want to keep you too long unless the Holy Ghost has different plans. Bless it, Lord. So John chapter 14. And verse 1 is where I'm going to start. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Notice this is written in red, which tells me that it's the words of Jesus Christ and what he's telling his disciples here. He's telling them, He said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Yes. In my Father's house are many mansions. Yes. If it were not so, I would have told you. Yeah. He goes on and he tells me, he says, I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself yeah. that where I am there ye may be also. Yeah. And whither I go ye know and the way ye know. Right. You can be seated if you want to. Oh. <clears throat> I think about this scripture And he tells them to let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. You know, everybody talks about tribulation is this big old thing of the future. But there is tribulation every day. Wow. Tribulation just simply means something that troubles the yeah. soul or the spirit or the body or the mind. Yes. Yeah. So they were having trouble in that day and time. They were facing tribulations just like we face today. People was coming against them because they was following Jesus Christ. People come against you and I because we follow Jesus Christ. So Jesus told his disciples in that day, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. So today Jesus is telling you and me, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Ye that believe in God ought to believe also in me. Right. Yep. And he's told them then, he said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Yep. If it were not so, I would have told you. Yep. I go to prepare a place for you. Uh-huh. That's <laughs> what he's telling you and me today. Although he may not be physically uh, with us like he was, was in this day and time spiritually he's with you and I if we have his blood applied to our life and he's telling us he said look don't get troubled when things are not going the way that you want them to go don't get troubled when you're being attacked on every side and don't get troubled when you've gone to, to a place to where you feel like you're between a rock and a hard place because if you believe in God you believe in me and if all of, with all of that said he said I'm going to prepare a place that one day you can be with me also and you'll not have to worry about these things no more amen amen <coughs> Glory to God. 
Verse 3, again he says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Now this was not meant just for his disciples. This was meant for you and I. Uh, uh, he, he, he's telling you and I that if he goes to prepare a place, which we know he's, he's doing right now, uh, 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 that he's going to come again someday to, to receive us uh, unto him and take us home. Because he wants his people to be with him. Says, and whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. He was telling them and telling you and I then. You know which way I go. You know what my teachings are. Yeah. Glory to God. You know the way that I go. Which he was telling them, saying, you know, you know uh, uh, what footsteps I take and what footsteps you should take. Yes. You know what I teach. You know what I preach, uh, and if you follow it, uh, then you'll make heaven your home yes. someday. Yes, amen. Yeah. Verse 5, Thomas said, saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Yeah. Jesus said unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me or unto the Father but by me. In other words, if we want to get to God, the Father, we've got to go through Jesus. He said in one, in one book that he was the door. Uh, and, and that, that uh, yeah, yeah. glory to God, if you don't enter in through the door, then you can't get to God and you can't get to heaven and make it your home. Amen. He said in another scripture that he was the vine and that he had many branches and that his Father and our Father God, if he seen any of his branches not bearing forth good fruit, he cuts it off and hews it down and throws it in the fire. But if he sees it bearing fruit, then he prunes it back so that it will grow and blossom even more. Glory to God. My, my, my. Way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You got to go through me first. Yep, yep. Have, have you ever been in a situation? Bless the Lord. To where somebody was threatening bodily harm or something other against a loved one, and you've used the term, well, uh, you got to go through me before you get to them. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus was saying. Mm -hmm. You got to go through me before you can get to my Father and your Father. If you don't go through me and the blood that I shed uh, to, uh, to give you remission of sin, then you can't get to my Father. Yep, yep. And if you can't get to my Father because you haven't gone through me, then you ain't going to get this new place that I've gone to prepare for you. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. I believe that God protects His own people, His own children. And I know this is turning it, but I'm gonna follow the Holy Ghost Bless. after that last statement. Bless the Lord. When we are like the the children of Israel that was chased down to the Red Sea and they were perplexed and they were pressed and they had all kinds of trouble going on. And when they got down to the sea, they, they all they could see with their physical eyes and think with their physical mind was, oh my goodness, we, we just escaped the troubles and trials of, of Egypt uh, just to be chased down here to a huge body of water. There's no way to cross over. We have no boats. 
We have now this or no that. Glory to God. We've got a mountain on the left that's too high to climb. we got a mountain on the right that's too high to climb. And now we've got Pharaoh's army quickly closing in. Amen. Amen. They began to complain and murmur. Yes, right, yes. Well, Moses, you should have just left this back there. I'm going to put this in my own uh, terms. At least we had three squares and a cot. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, we may have been troubled and perplexed on every side there, but now we're still here in the same situation. Troubled and perplexed on every side. Amen. But God then, or God begins to speak to Moses and he tells him, he says, you stand there at the, the banks and you hold out your staff and you wait on me. Yeah. Yes. My, my, my. Bless the, Lord. the enemy has got to go through Jesus before he can get to you and I. That's what I'm trying to get at today with this, with this how this changed. It was the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you. Yeah. Glory to God. That if the enemy wants to get to Sister Betty, he's not only got to go through all of us as friends and a, a, a church body, but he's got to go through Jesus Christ first. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Well, why did you say he's got to go through the church body? Because when when one body one member suffers, the whole body suffers. Glory to God. When one member aches, the whole body aches. What does that mean? Is when we see people that are being perplexed and they're being uh, uh, troubled and the enemy's attacking, then we are to go to spiritual warfare. Sister Betty, that you and I talked about not long ago. We've got to go into a spiritual warfare and a spiritual battle for that person. Yes, 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 yes. Glory to God. Amen. And by doing so, that enemy then has to go through Jesus Christ. Why? Because we, the body, who sees another body suffering, are troubled and perplexed, are taking it before God, and we're covering it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, and when we take it before God and take it before Jesus and we cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ, then the enemy cannot cross the bloodline. Therefore, the enemy can't go through Jesus to get to God or get to Sister Betty. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. But we can pray and we can hold up Sister Betty. Yes. I'm picking on you, I know. But I love you. But if Sister Betty my, my, my. If Sister Betty does not receive the the prayers that have went up for her, yes. and she sits in doubt and sits in waver, it's all for naught. We can't be delivered if we don't want delivered. We can't be set free if we don't want set free. We can't overtake the enemy if we don't stand on God's word and, and uh, believe everything that it says. Come on, somebody. Verse 7, Jesus says, If ye had not known me, ye should have known my Father also. And my and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Yep. Uh -huh. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. If I said that right. Yeah. Yep. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you, and ye has, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? Yeah. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Yes. Yeah. And how saith thou then, 
show us the Father. Yes. Believest thou not that I am the Father, uh -huh. and the Father it I am in the Father. Let me re reread that. I left out a word. Says, believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Uh -huh. All right, now that already trumps those oneness folk. Uh, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he uh, doeth the work. So, they couldn't understand that, but let me put this into some layman terms. If you look at me, like he was telling them, Jesus said, if you look at me and you see me, and you know me, then you know my Father, or you know the Father. Because uh, they, their words that they speak uh, coexist, if you want, if I, that's the right, right way in terms to, to put it. In other words, even if you didn't know my earthly dad, but you knew of him or you had seen pictures of him, when you look at me or any of my brothers, you can tell that he is our dad. Uh -huh. Correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. Because there's traits of him in each of us. Yes. Yes. All right? That's the way it is with Jesus and God. Because Jesus is the Son of God, there is the traits of God in Jesus. And they're in agreement on everything. Just like when the Holy Ghost come into play, all three of them then become of a, in agreement. And that's why there is the Godhead of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You've got a God of all. You've got the Son of God, and then you've got the Holy Ghost yep. that is of Spirit. Jesus and God, and they are all one because all three of them agree. So he says, if ye have known me, ye should have known my Father yep. also. Yeah. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. Mm -mm. Philip saith unto him, Lord, I never read all that. Nine, Jesus saith unto them, I've read that one. Let's go to verse 10. I read that in verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, listen to this, church, the works that I do, shall he also, or shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Just imagine that. Think for a moment of the works that Jesus done. Just to name a few, he healed the leper, he opened up blinded eyes, yeah. mm -hmm. he caused the lame to walk, the dumb to talk, he raised the dead, he raised the dead. healed leprosy, yep. mm -hmm. glory to God, walked on water, uh, walked on water, <laughs> thank you Jesus, the list goes on and on, now think about that, and listen to this, Verse 12 again says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh -huh. He that believeth on me, uh -huh. the works that I, Jesus, do, shall he, talking about you and me that are saints, do also, now catch this, and greater works than these 
shall he do. Because I go unto my Father. Now he's not saying that we can do that we'll do greater works than what he's done because it makes us superior to him. He's saying that we'll do what he's done. Uh, and we can do even greater because he's went to his father and he's laid his blood sacrifice down Amen. on the, 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 the altar of atonement Amen. for you and I for that last lamb perfect sacrifice. Yes, 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 yes. My, my, my. Can you imagine? He healed the sick, he raised the dead. That he's telling us that you and I have the same power to do those same things Amen. and even greater things than those, then why is the church not doing it? They're not activating their faith. <laughs> exactly. They're not activating their faith. Walking by sight, not by faith. And that's yep. right. Mm -hmm. Boy, it got quiet. <laughs> like he fell that goes to us pastors, uh, uh, evangelists, and singers. Verse 13 says, Jesus says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Well, I'm going to stop there because I've done, I've done here this in, in the spirit. Whether it's coming from someone here or someone that's listening on Facebook. I've asked all kinds of things in the name of uh, Jesus. And I've not gotten it. Well, that scripture's a ball-faced lie. Are you in a mess? No. You're just an unlearned idiot. Well, there you go. Hey, Jesus called them vipers. And let me tell you why I say you're just an unlearned idiot. Because the, the rest of that scripture says that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Just because we ask something in the name of Jesus Christ and he says that if you do it that way, I will do, doesn't mean that he's going to do it if it's not going to glorify God the Father through Amen. him, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Come on, I, I can sit and I can pray all day long over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can pray all day long until I'm blue in the face. Pray in the mist. For something that I think that I need. And if God and Jesus don't think that I need it, and that they're not going to get the glory from it, then I'm not going to get it. Not only that, there's certain things that we've got to do for ourselves. I could pray all day long. For a paycheck. But if I'm not getting out and doing what I need to do to receive that paycheck, I ain't going to get that paycheck. Uh, That's right. I can pray until I'm blue in the face for the Lord to fill my table with food. But if I don't take what he has given me and go to the grocery store and pick the stuff up, it's not just going to materialize, folks. Yeah, yeah. Now sometimes he'll send people with a bag full of groceries for you. He's done that for me. Yeah. <laughs> but what, what I'm getting at is if I've got the means to go get, get some groceries. Exactly. Sensible. And I think to myself, Lord, it'd be nice to have a T-bone steak dinner and a baked tater and a salad. <laughs> and I don't get up and I take the means that God has provided me to go to the store to purchase those items. It ain't never going to get cooked and put on the table. Amen. Yep, 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 yep. Now, if I sit here and I pray all day long, I'm not going to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Sister Angie, like you just said, and I have I, I have no money, no means to, to provide food for my family or myself, then yes, I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt because it's happened to me time and time again that yeah. God will put it upon the hearts of praying people well, yes. and send them by my way either with some kind of food already in a bag or come by my way and say, hey, the Lord showed me that you need help and you need a bill paid. I want to pay that bill. The Lord can send them your way and say, hey, God showed me that you need food yeah. in your house. Come on, let's go to Kroger's. Yeah. Get whatever you want and I'll pay for it. Because that's the God that we serve if we serve Him. Boy, He has called us to serve. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. These things can happen. And they do happen. But we have Gotten, we have have to have gotten to the point, Sister Betty, yep. that we have laid off the old coat yes, amen. and we put on a new coat. Yes, amen. Boy, I seem to be hitting all kinds of scriptures I've been on all week what? out of this morning. But that's all right. Because we can't get nothing from God if we don't put nothing into it. Yeah, that's true. And I'm not just talking about finances. No. I'm not talking about wealth and cars and homes and oh, name brand clothes and all that stuff. Yes. Yeah, God will provide those things if, if it's a, if it's a must. Yeah. But the, the the need. Not the greed. That's right. So people, people always misquote that scripture. God will supply all of my needs Need. according to his riches and glory. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, you're prophesying. Yep. It does not say needs with an S. It says need, N-E-E-D. -E -E what is a need? Food, clothing, shelter. Exactly. The necessities Ooh. that we have to have in order to live in this life. Amen. Amen. I have been on, you can ask my girls, I've been on a rampage for a month, month or two, maybe longer. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you better start getting happy you got what you got and eat what you got and be happy that you got it to eat because there's folks out there that ain't got a nary thing. That's right. That's true. There's folks out there in other countries that's starving to death and, and wish for one minute they'd have a bowl of, of rice for supper or a bowl of soup beans and a, a pound of cornbread. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God's folks has, has gotten to a point that, 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 that they're... All content. Sense of entitlement. Yep. Entitlement. Yep. Yep. They, think, they think they're entitled. To, to everything that they want or everything that they can think of. Yeah. The only thing that you and I are entitled to is the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. And it washes you and I white as snow. And then after that moment, we, we have to follow out His instructions. Yes. I've heard this all the time growing up. Bible, B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Dad, Mom used to sing a song and said, I'm using my Bible for a roadmap. The children of Israel used it too. Glory to God. Well, what is our roadmap? It steps right here. Yes. It's the Holy hey. Bible. Pick it up hey. today. Yes. Find where you lost your way. Amen. And then we won't have to worry about the troubles. Because we know that he's went to prepare a place for you and I. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Next verse, Jesus tells them. He says, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If, oh my Lord, there's a stipulation. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Amen. Right. Woo, my God. 
buddy. They don't like that part, do they? <laughs> Boy, I've read this so many a time, but what that's saying there just turn a brick. Uh-huh. He says, I, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. But yep. then he gives that stipulation. Yep. If you, that's what ye means, you. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And then he goes on, he says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you a, another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Who is that spirit of truth? Huh? Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now that is another scripture that proves that when you get saved, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Yep. Yes. Yes. Now, we talked about this a, uh, uh, a little while ago. That's proof in white with red letters, Jesus himself says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yep, yep, yep. Talking about that Holy Ghost, that com other comforter, it was the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. So that tells me when I receive salvation, yeah. I answer the call uh, to repent that I am automatically filled with the Holy Ghost. Yep. Now the other things that we talked about, the speaking in tongues, laying hands on the sick, the dancing, the being laid in slain, the prophesying, glory to God. All of those things. That comes later as you grow and get an understanding of the Holy Ghost. And then you can be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, somebody. You got fire. Jesus went on in verse 19. He says, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. He was telling them, if even after I'm gone, if you'll continue after my teachings that came from God the Father, that you'll see me uh, because I live, and by you following the, the ways that I have taught you, then you're also going to live. And that day... Ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. See, we can't have God without Jesus, and we can't have Jesus without God. Because Jesus is in God, and God is in Jesus. And then if we have Jesus, then uh, we are in Jesus and God. And God and Jesus are also in us. Did I lose anybody? Mm -hmm. Amen. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. And keepeth them. Right. He it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Now, 
if we are truly saved, we're going to do our best to follow out the commandments that God has set forth for you and I. And if, if we should, because the Bible does say that we all sin and fall short of the glory of God, just because you're, you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb don't make you perfect. Absolutely. You will not be perfect until the day you cross over Jordan Stream. Oh, that got quiet too. Yeah, I know we got some in Carolina and Hemline doctors that think that if your Carolina and Hemline is just right, then you then, then you're all that in a bag of tater chips. And that they don't sin. But that's a lie from the pits yeah. of hell. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Spread by the devil uh -huh. to folks to twist the scriptures. Yeah. If we truly got salvation, we are not going to willfully sin. I'm going to try to close it here. We got to understand there is a difference, Sister Betty, in a willful sin, premeditated sin, and a slip up or a mishap. Uh -huh. Because we're in the flesh. And if you do, you're going to That's right. And, it, and if you truly are saved, when you have a slip up and a mishap, it's going to correct you like Sister Betty said, just like that. You're going to feel guilt or shame or something other that's going to say, uh-oh, big boy, you better go check yourself. Yep. Uh -huh. Girl, you better go check yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. We've all done it. Yep. Yes, we sure have. Preachers, pastors, teachers. Okay. You you. You let somebody who say they say tell you that they do not sin. They're and I will tell them to their face they are a liar. Therefore they have done sin. <laughs> On top of the sin that they done did before telling me that they didn't they never sinned. Amen. There's, a, there's a whole lot of folk go to church. And instead of having salvation, they have religion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of folks that go to church that don't have salvation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They don't have religion. They just there because that's what mommy and mama all did. So they think they're all right because they're just following mama and mommy's footsteps. Well, I'm sorry. You can't uh, you can't get in on Mamma and Mommy's skirt tail. Yep. You can't get in on uh, Papa and uh, Daddy's uh, pant leg. Nope, nope. You can't climb up the other uh, the back side and, and sneak in. Yep. Okay. You can't go around it to the right or the left. You can't go under it. Yep. You've got to go in at the door. There's a lot of folks sitting in church today. My, my. Bless the Lord. They sitting in church today because that's what mommy and mama and papa and daddy uh, did, brought them to church every time the door is open, and, and they're thinking they're all right, but yet they have never had the uh, Holy Ghost to uh, uh, give them a spirit of conviction yep. to come into an altar of repentance. Yep. They think just because they've done it all their life and that's what they're used to, that that automatically saves them. But it does not. And then you got folk that think uh, just because they know the scriptures, that makes them saved. Well, no. The devil knows just as much, if not more, of this scripture than you sitting in this church house today know. Well, how can you say that, Pastor? That's blasphemy. No. no Satan was the most beautiful angel that ever was. He was over the music in heaven. Glory to God. Therefore, he knows what the Word of God says. But he decided he was going to try to get his little posse together. And glory to God. And overthrow God off of the throne. But he found out real quick that him and his posse was going to get thrown out of heaven. 
So don't tell me that the devil don't know this word better than you or me. I don't care if you've got your doctrine in theology. The devil knows his word inside and out better than you. But here's what the church needs to realize, Sister Betty. Is he may know this word inside and out. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. If we will then turn this word around on him, we would be able to overcome a lot of heartache, a lot of trouble. Simply by looking at the devil and saying, hey, I rebuke you, Satan. Get thee behind me in the name of Jesus. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Come on, somebody. Brother Gilbert, but we use it with authority. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. The truck. Bible says we've got the power. Oh yes. Yes, we do. In the name of who? Jesus. 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 Yes. Glory to God. Yes, Jesus. I want to open up these altars today. If you want to pray, come and pray. Not just because you feel like you need saved or need to rededicate, but pray for your church. Pray for the church members. Pray for those that you know that's around, that's been here, that's not been back in a while for whatever reason. Yes. This altar is not just for a sinner. Yes. The main purpose of this altar was for the church. Yeah. Amen. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Back in 1 Kings chapter 18... Elijah went up against the 450 prophets of Baal and after they did their spiel and everything he began to laugh and mock them and but after he laughed and mocked them what did he do? He rebuilt the altar yep. uh -huh. the altar is for the saints yep. yes it's for the sinner but it's for the saints if the saints don't hit an altar whether it be down here or at your seat, sitting on your toilet, if you don't hit an altar and you don't prepare that altar, then my, my, my. Glory to God. I don't care if you're sitting in uh, glory to God. I'm going to pick on Kevin and Lisa. I don't care if you're sitting in the middle of your favorite restaurant, the Waffle House. Oh, yeah. I love it. If you feel an unction to pray, you better you better begin to build a, a spiritual altar right there. Yeah. I don't care if it's down on the floor, if it's sitting up on the table or on the counter, wherever you at. And you better go with God in prayer because you might be putting you might be putting the the fuel fuel and the. Uh, uh, into the weapon in the arsenal for somebody that is needing your prayer through a spiritual warfare whether you know who they are or where they are at. That's right. Or it could be for something or safety or whatever for you later on down the road right. that you don't know about. Yep. God's church needs to realize that yes, he's going to prepare a place but secondly, he told us we have to follow out his uh, instructions, glory to God, in order to get to that place. And sometimes it may, it may mean pushing the plate back. Sometimes it might be to, to, to uh, test your faith a little bit more, knowing that, hey, I don't have but X amount of dollars, but, the God, but God and the Holy Ghost told me to put that X amount of dollar in the offering plate. And you go ahead and do it. That's blind faith. I won't. I won't say who, but we have a sister here. I love when I get uh, count up the offering, and I see that she's written a check, no matter what the amount is. Uh, in the memo part, she always, always, always writes gift in blind faith. Yeah. 
I'm going to quit because I don't hear somebody, hear my mind, somebody thinking or saying, well, here we go. He's going he's gonna to turn into one of them money preachers. Uh, no. <laughs> no. But, huh? I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I want to, before he gets started, I want to share something with you. Just the Lord's landed on my heart. You said um, something about your girls that said that you've been fussing and telling they ought to be thankful for what they've got and all this. Mm -hmm. If you all, if anybody here had been here one day when Carolyn and I was giving out food. Exactly. That was the most pitiful thing I have ever experienced in me, as old as I am. They was two men that came here looking for food, and the grocery store down the road sent them up here and said there was a box out And how they know, I do not know. They said there was a box out there that had food in it. And they walked up here to get some food. Now, we just happened to be here, Carolyn and I did. And um, another car had come just, actually, we, they were here. It, it just, the it just laid it on my heart to come. And when we pulled in the parking lot, the two gentlemen was here. And we seen this one vehicle pull out. So they had wiped it out before they got to it, pretty much. Pretty much. But they had left a can of something, chicken and dumplings. Yes, they had left a can of chicken and dumplings in the cabinet. And um, I don't know if there was anything else in there or not. I can't remember. Drive in the wind. Yes, and he had it in his pocket. Now, what he was doing with pinto beans, I do not know. But they said they were starved to death. And it was very, very cold. Very cold out there. Very cold. And uh, it just hit me that there were buns and wieners in that freezer. And me and her thought, okay, they need something hot. And we went back there in the microwave and fixed them those hot dogs to eat. Mm -hmm. by, the, by the time we got back out there, they had took a knife and had opened that can of chicken and dumplings and it had already consumed that chicken. And, and he said, I'm so sorry, but I am so hungry. Now, when, you, when anybody complains, well, I want this, I want that, when they got a kitchen full of food, they need to think about. And then another thing, there's people out there that say it, well, if God is so great, why is these people starved to death? Let me tell you why. Because they have not followed God. But when they need help, where do they come? Yes. They True. come to the house of God. Yes. And they know that they're going to get some. And when they left, I, I don't know what all they did. We did one of pinto beans. We wanted the pinto beans. Yes, we did. And we hot dogs. opened a can of pinto beans, and they consumed all that food. And I found them some sweaters to put on, and we didn't have gloves, and they put socks, socks on, on their hands, hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for gloves. So when people complain they don't have this or they don't have that, be thankful if you've got one can of those pinto wipes in the right. cabinet. You have to heat them and you can eat them. That's right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I had for some reason I had to share that with the church today. That was so pitiful. And for God's sakes, people, we need to I seen soup sitting back there and I think I know who's brought it. But that's okay if it's not got a flick top. Oh, we even give them a can opener, too. Yes, we did. Well, yes, we give them, we we give them can of food. Huh? Oh, go ahead. You're good. You're uh, good. We give them a can opener, and they had some canned food. And he, I asked him, I said, where are you all staying? Under the bridge. Under, under the bridge. bridge. And he under says, I bridge. know how to build a fire. Yeah. And I said, you take this canned food, and you take that. And we invited them to church. We asked and we talked to him about God. And the one boy broke down and went to cry. And he said, please pray for my mother. He said, 
as we speak, said she is dying. Mm -hmm. And if, he, if she dies, I don't know what I will do. And he said, I have been in a car wreck. He said, I'm not just some old bug Joe out here on the street. He said, I was in a car wreck. <coughs> lost my job, then I lost my home. My car was gone because it was totaled. I was laying flat on my back in the hospital. And he said, this is where I am. But they get in those conditions because they don't follow God. It's right. not because God put them in those situations. Right. They're in those situations because the choices. The, the choices that they have made. Right. That's right. But where do they come when they want help? They come to the house of God. Yeah. So for God's sakes, people, please, if you can only bring one thing every Sunday to the food bank, we need it. Yeah, right. there's Amen. people out there that needs it. Now there's people out there, there's there's one car, and I want the whole church to pray for them. There's one car that robs us blind. Yeah. Yes, it is. Robs us blind. And they took that food and them boys standing out there starving. They took that food. There was things that, that Sister Louise brings in here that you could open and eat right then. And they took it, and those two men standing out there starving and left them with a bag of dried beans. Mm. So, think about it when you're complaining about what you've got at home. Uh, First of all, you've got a home. Yeah. You've got yeah. a bed. Uh -huh. uh, you've got a warm place to lay down and sleep. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And you've got something to eat if it is a whole can of beans. Right. Yeah. Right. Or chicken and dumplings. Or chicken and dumplings. Mm -hmm. I would have never dream nobody would eat a can of chicken dumplings right straight out of the can. But they consumed them. They were so hungry. And his britches looked like they was going to fall off of him. They were so big and he was so skinny. And he asked her for more pants. He said, I'll keep them up on, on me some way. He said, I'll tie them. I'll do something. He said, we need all the clothes we can get on. Because he said, we like to froze to death last night. Mm -hmm. And that's this happened back during the time that we had all the water lines yes, busted. Yes, yes. Back when it was negative zero. Yes, because I was under the floor yeah. mixing yeah. them, I can tell. You. And that boy said, if there's anything, he said, if you've got a leak now, he said, I'll crawl under there and fix it for you. He didn't. Yes, he did. Yeah. So please, I please. Yeah. And you yeah. never know. You never. You, we don't know what this church does to them no, in no. days to come. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. We we don't know. Now, one more thing I want to share with you all too. Us hanging these clothes on the line, have you been down Main Street? In the city park, in the city park, they had put up a building with clothes hanging in it. Well, that's true. Lord, During Christmas, they had this little building there that says Santa Claus's house. Mm -hmm. They've got it sitting there now, and they keep it full of clothes for people to come in and get clothes. Oh, so oh, our boy. church is shining. Yep. We don't know who or where, but our church is shining. Yep. Yes. Yes. They've because never done that before in how many years have we been here? <laughs> there is. Go down Main Street and look where the little park is. And you'll see in the where we had church yeah. in the park. There's a little building, and they've got it full of clothes. And I, it's open. It's not something locked up. Now, you know, down on the corner, oh, we did close that at a certain time. And then they've got it where if you, if you donate clothes and another person comes along and wants clothes, now I'm talking about church, and another person comes along and wants some clothes out there, they can't get them. They have to wait till they open the door and come out and get them clothes or they can find the time that they are open. Mm -hmm. Ours is free out here. Yeah. Yep. And and we have, there's no yeah, clothes out there. Keeping it stocked through the week too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she does good. When she's not here, I put something out there. It ain't what 
She's crazy though. She tries to match everything up. <laughs> I say, I don't care if they match or not. They're going to keep them warm. But she tries to make them outfits. Praise the Lord. This altar is open. And remember, we got that uh, a quick business meeting uh, after service is over with. But this altar is open if anybody wants to pray. I
Jesus, we thank you for who you are today, God. We thank you that you are real today, God, and that you are beyond the capability of man, Father God. We ask you, Lord, that you would meet every need today, God. God, the needs that we don't even, that we're unaware of, Father God, we ask you that you would step into the midst of it, God, that you would meet those needs, that you would take care of it, God. We ask, Lord, that you would keep each and every person here. We also pray for Elizabeth right now, God. Yes. I don't know what's going on, but I believe that you can touch her. Yes. That you can heal her body, Father God. We ask you that you would minister to her right now, Father God. We ask you, Lord, that the lost people, Father God, that are around here, Lord, that you would bring them to, to this place, God. God, we also ask you for the people that have been saved here, God, that they would get established somewhere, Father God, whether it would not be here, God, somewhere. They would get rooted and grounded in you because a tree that is not rooted will not survive. Father God, and I ask right now that you would keep each and every person, bless them abundantly, God, whether we be here, there, or in the air, we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Now,